So that's what people need to know. They need to get up and just do it. This is the How to Quit Working Show. Jeff Steinman believes entrepreneurship is the only true path to freedom. That's why he created the How to Quit Working Show, where you'll hear stories, insights, and inspiration from lifestyle fanatics who left their soul-sucking 9-to-5 job forever. Now, here's your host author, entrepreneur, and ultimate lifestyle fanatic, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. I've got something a little bit different today. Now, today we're going to be talking to Mark Renson, who opened a coffee shop and cafe in New York City which is a very different approach than what we normally talk about here on the How to Quit Working Show. We normally talk about types of the types of businesses that you can get up and running and have a profitable much faster than a restaurant. But Mark was able to make this work, and I wanted to offer this perspective. And, and I think he has a lot of great stuff to teach us and also, I think a big lesson is that you know we might we think in the common the common um, what would you call it the common uh, perception about restaurants is that there's something that takes a long time to get up and running and you're going to have to be unprofitable for several years. Well, uh, Mark was able to make it work and he was able to make it work uh, pretty quickly and pretty successfully with his coffee shop in New York City. So. Listen to this. It's going to be really exciting to to kind of get the lessons that he pulls out of his experience of starting this coffee shop and cafe. And if you want to continue the conversation after the show, go over to howtoquitworking.com slash group, and that shoots you over to Facebook where you can just click on Join Group, and then you'll be part of the How to Quit Working Circle group on Facebook, and that's where we keep talking about this stuff, keep talking with other people like yourself who are going to quit that job and create an amazing life of freedom. And what better way to uh, ensure your own success than to hang out with people that have the same goals in life. So go over to howtoquitworking.com slash group. And now let's talk to Mark Renson. Mark, welcome to the show. Why, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, yeah. You've got an interesting story here. You you quit, as you put it, working as a drone in the food corporate world to take your passion for music and Hollywood and combine that with your love of the food industry and create something out of that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I certainly did. What I did was I created my restaurant called Ambition Coffee and Eatery. And I always like to say that like attracts a like. And I do. I love food, music, and Hollywood. And I've taken all three of those things, put it in my restaurant, and now I feed A-list celebrities. Not not too bad of a dream, huh? <laughs> that is pretty That is pretty cool. What are, what are some of the A-list celebrities that you fed? Um, uh, Bradley Cooper, Ryan Gosling, The Cake Boss, uh, Kristen Chenoweth, George Hamilton, Barbara Eden. Um, the, the list just goes on and on and on. It's just it's pre- it's a pretty fantastic life. Yeah, that's that's quite a that's quite a uh, quite a list there. Tell us a little bit about that transition. So you were working in the corporate food industry. What what made you say one day, ah, screw it? I think I'm going to just open a cafe in New York and start feeding celebrities. Well, you have to really back up. When I was 16, I saw the movie um, Sunset. Oh, no, I can't even think of it. It was with Michelle Pfeiffer. Sunset. Um, okay, I don't we'll, know. But anyway, it was, we'll it's it about the, a restaurant. We'll put it in the show notes below. Yeah. Uh, it was about a restaurant. And um, I, I said at 16, I want to own a restaurant. And then I went into the restaurant field and I started washing dishes. But. Later in life, of course, I went to college and got my degree and worked in many corporations. But I guess to answer your question, I was doing everything I should have been doing as food production manager, working for Sedesco, which is a big food giant. And um, no matter what I did, wasn't good enough. Mm. And no matter how many times I hit my numbers, if I didn't hit my numbers once, that's all they focused on is everything that... I wasn't doing enough of, and so I I finally just said, you know, enough. And this is this is enough. So you could hit your numbers forty seven weeks in a row, and then week forty eight, if you didn't, the the previous forty seven didn't matter. Correct, and of course, about the one where you didn't. Wow. Yes, and of course, my manager, when I didn't hit my number, didn't get his bonus. I didn't get anything for it other than my weekly salary. Mm. 
And so that's why whenever he didn't get his bonus, he made sure he got it the next time. Mm. So there you are in the food industry and you decide you're going to make this leap. What? How, how did that work? Well, of course, it's like anything else. It's, it was a transition. It was coming. I knew it was coming. I was planning for it. Um, I don't think anybody can really plan for it. You know, there is no quote, quote, right time to do anything. I don't believe. I think you just have to jump and, and start doing it. Yep. But um, really what, what happened is because I didn't hit my number, I was demoted and I was put into another quad where I was made to learn a new training procedure to feed this quad. Mm. And on January 18th of 2000, when the, when the quad opened for 30,000 students, I handed in my resignation on that day. And I just said, this is it. I'm not working for you guys anymore. I went, I was unemployed for three months until the restaurant opened. Okay. Um, I just, I was able to save up some money and I just focused on, I traveled down the entire East Coast and I stopped at coffee houses all the way down the East Coast and I got some great ideas and then April 10th, Ambition was born. Awesome. Awesome. Now the cafe is in New York, right? The cafe is in New York, yes. Not a cheap place to open a cafe or to do anything. (laughs) Not in New York State, no. (laughs) (laughs) So... That sounds, it sounds financially quite challenging. Well, yes, it is. And no, it wasn't. Um, we purchased a building that already had a restaurant in it. So that lowered our startup costs because, okay. you know, tables, chairs, pots, stoves, everything was already in, in the business. Okay. Um, we bought it from a woman who was 75 years old and was tired of it. She was, mm-hmm. it was an old, smoky, dirty tavern. Okay. We purchased it, we gutted it, we painted it, and we had it open in five weeks. And of course, because it's an old tavern, it's grandfathered. So it's got all the old world charm of yesterday, which was what my customers really love. Ah, cool, cool. Well, what, tell us a little bit about like some of the things that you had to do to make the financial transition work. I mean, did you have to kind of make some sacrifices? Did you have to, um, maybe eat out less or, or uh, do any kind of planning in, in advance to make sure that that all worked out? You know what? I The biggest thing I did is, yes, I, I made um, financial sacrifices. Um, when, I, when I started the business, I only paid myself $500 a week because that was all I needed. And I paid myself $500 a week for the first year. So I guess for the first year, I pretty much did nothing but was a slave to the business as most entrepreneurs are. You, you have to get, you have to get your dream up and running and you, you, there's no time to be proud of how much money you make when you're starting a business. You just, you just gotta work. So the first year, yes, the first year was very financially tough. Uh, I really didn't do anything. Um, as you say, I didn't eat out as much as I would like to have, but, um, almost 14 years later, 15 years later, here it is up and running successful. And so, you know, the the sacrifices are worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was what would you say was the biggest challenge that you faced in that in that transition? Um, the biggest challenge I believe really was being my own boss and being the one where I had to make the decisions um as far as hiring, firing, um insurance companies, uh, advertising, where where is my money going to be well spent? Um I, I just, it's, it's like with most entrepreneurs, you, you just, you got to feel, you got to feel with your gut and go with what you think is the right choice. And, um, and that's, that's has always worked for me. Um, I'm, I guess I've been pretty lucky. I really haven't had too many challenges, shall I say? I mean, when the recession hit in 09, of course, I think everybody felt that one. You know, mm-hmm. we, we financially were hit then as mm-hmm. most entrepreneurs were. Um, we ran up a nice little tax bill. Mm. Um, but thankfully that's all paid off now. Um, but I, I've been very fortunate that I have had very few challenges other than the, the typical in the restaurant business where employees steal from you or, you know, customers, mm-hmm. you know, lie about what happened to the food or, you know, just mm-hmm. little things like that. Sure. Sure. 
Well, you know, how, uh, the thing that's interesting is is that any business, that you know, the most important thing is getting customers in the door, whether that's literally or figuratively. And in your case, that's literally getting yes. customers in the door. What's what's been the best thing that you've done to get customers in the door? I like to think it's word of mouth. I mean, we have a great product. We have a great ambiance. And ambition isn't just a restaurant. I mean, there are, there are a lot of restaurants in the world, and most of them are just restaurants. But when you walk into ambition, you're walking into my dream. And when you walk into my dream, it's like walking onto a movie set. And you walk in, and you're just enthralled, and you just start looking over at everything like you've been here before. And like, this is the set of, shall I say, the Golden Girls. So you want to see the couch. You want to see the sofa. You want to see this. You want to see that. And that's what it's like walking into ambition. There's disco balls. There's pictures of Cher. There's Madonna. There's uh, photo albums. There's uh, posters of The Godfather. There's it's it's like nothing you will ever see again or have seen. Ambition is completely unique, and and that's what people love about it. It's it's again, it's walking into my soul, and it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it sounds like it. You know, as I was driving into my office here to do this interview, we're doing this early in the morning, and I, I kept thinking, I was like, wouldn't it be fun, actually, to do this interview at Ambition Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun. If only it I was, was in New York. <laughs> I, well, wouldn't it be fun to just be in New York, period? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Mark, you talked a little bit about using that gut feeling that you have to make decisions. How do you know when your gut is telling you something? How do I, um, you know, usually it, you feel it throughout your body. If we all know negative feelings, we all know positive feelings. If you have a negative feeling, you know, your stomach starts turning and you, know, you, you just, you start worrying. Mm -hmm. But when you have a positive feeling, you get goosebumps and you get excited and you start thinking of unlimited possibilities. Mm. And when I get those unlimited possibilities, I know I'm right. And I know I'm on target and I'm not going to say I'm going to get that answer that day, but I know through perseverance and persistence, the answer will come. Mm. So that's your first cue is when you start to, when you start to feel that tingliness, maybe some goosebumps and you feel unlimited possibilities or you see unlimited possibilities. Yes. So you know yes. You're going in the right direction. Correct. Very, very cool. Mark, tell us a little bit about what is your life like on a day-to-day -day basis now that you run this cafe? On a day-to-day -day basis, every single day is different, which is what I absolutely love right. about my job. Um, I never know who's going to walk in. Um, right now, we are feeding the cast and crew of the Broadway show Newsies. They just pulled in town. Um, rumor has it Harvey Firestein is going to be here. So um, cool. he's probably going to be in the restaurant next. <laughs> uh -huh. So cool. you might hear about that next. So you're going to be finishing oh. up this interview and then having lunch with Harvey Firestein. <laughs> well, that's I don't know what's going to happen on this lunch business this the business lunch that's later this day, but <laughs> something along those lines is probably what's going to happen. Yes. Um, so on an everyday basis, I never know what's going to happen because I never know who's going to walk in. My hours are eight to four. We serve dinners whenever Proctor's, which is a theater, uh, has shows, okay. and they have shows about half a year. Um, so between eight to four, I never know what's going to happen. I never know who's going to walk in. Um, although I do make the same food every day and I brew the same coffee every day, I don't see the same people every day. So it's, it's, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain how my day is. I mean, it's, it's chaotic. It's crazy. It's unusual. Um, it's fast paced, it's very fast paced, especially because we're in a downtown and we feed, uh, mostly downtown, uh, workers who need to be in and out in less than an hour. So our lunch is bound, 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 bound. And that makes it very difficult to hire people because not many people can handle that pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so how is my day on an everyday basis? It's just, it's crazy and chaotic. And, um, Part of that is I wrote a book about it. It's called Is the Coffee Fresh? And it's drama, dysfunction, and daily life at a downtown coffee house. And I go on to explain all the craziness of every single one of my days and, and what happens and who comes in and and all the craziness that happens. <laughs> that sounds like a blast. Well, we're going to link that book up below. Mark, what's the biggest piece of advice that you would have to somebody who's sitting out there thinking, that sounds so cool, I'd like to do that, but... I just don't know. Well, I guess my advice to them is just do it. 
you just got to get up and you got to do it. And as simple as that may sound, that's the answer. A lot of people have a lot of dreams and they don't act on them. And that's why they don't come to fruition. But if you act on a dream, I guarantee you it will come to fruition. Mm, Great, great advice. Mark, where can we go to get more information about you and uh, Ambition Cafe? Well, you, you can find us on Facebook, of course. Ambition Coffee and Eatery is on Facebook. We're on Twitter, which is Ambition Bistro. Um, you can go to our website, which is ambitionbistro.com. And uh, I, we're all over social media, too, on Yelp. We're on Urban Spoon. We're on TripAdvisor, you know, all over social media. Um, you can find me through my publisher, which is 23 House Publishing. Um yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways cool. that a person can find me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll link we'll link that up below. Mark, how do you define success? Doing what you love, being able to wake up in the morning and to do what you love and go to home tired and want to wake up the next day and do it again. Um, I never put money on success, and I think anybody who does is a poor person because money does not play a part in my business life. I mean, we all need money. We all want money, but I don't judge how much money I make as far as my success. My success is doing what I love. Wow. Great, great advice. Mark, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing your uh, story and telling us about Ambition Coffee. I so just wish that I was there having a cup of coffee and and, uh, and having a bite to eat for breakfast. What you've done is inspiring. There's so many people out there who want to open restaurants, want to open cafes, want to open any kind of business, and they're sitting on the sidelines. And here you are, someone who's been very successful in that type of business, and you're saying, just do it. So that's just- the, that's the advice. That's it. Just do it. I mean, we all have dreams. You got to follow. You got to follow your dreams. I'm sure you're following your dreams, which is where you are right now. Is because you got up off the couch and you did something about it. And look at you. Look at all the great things you're doing. So that's what people need to know. They need to get up and just do it. What an inspiration Mark is to anybody who has a goal, a dream, something that they want to accomplish. It, it kills me whenever I ask folks who are on the show, you know, what's the biggest piece of advice? It's always something like, just go do it. Just go do it. So if you're not off doing it, why the heck not? You've had almost 100 people on this show telling you to just go do it. Hell, we're probably at 100 guests by now. I should count one of these days. Anyway, go over to the How to Quit Working Circle on Facebook, and you'll have a bunch more people telling you to just do it. HowToQuitWorking.com slash group. Head over to Facebook, click Join Group, and then join in the great conversation, and I will talk to you next time where we'll have another amazing show for you. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working Show. Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.